I've been reading a lot of comments under my latest video, for which I'm very grateful for, but one thing that caught my eye was the amount of PD requests and that I could have integrated PD in the Broadbooth. I think it's very valid, but I've never worked with PD in my life, so I started studying what's, what's out there. So I gotta give my credit to uh, Pierce42, as well as the Curious Scientist PD adaptations. Eventually I settled for a CYPD3177 chip and made the voltage selections through solder jumps. For the size of the PCB, I went for exactly the same as the Broadbus C. The PCB took a few days to complete, uh, I had to go back and forth a lot to the schematic and the data sheet, but eventually I was pretty happy with the first prototype. I thought it was pretty good, I had all the voltage selections and all the current selections, all the PCB trace widths were adequate. Uh, it didn't feel right, so I decided to just sleep on it and see how I feel the next day. And the next day I deleted absolutely everything and redesigned it completely. So this time the output is on the outside, traces are thicker. The voltage selections were still jumper shorts, but I was a bit more happy with this design as it just made much more sense and I sent it to the fab. It got here in one piece and everything looks fine. I thought the solder selection would be okay and it is for the first time, but after a while it becomes an absolute nightmare. I also made a mistake here. The biggest fail was, however, that I thought requested current would equal provided current, and it's not true. In reality, the current is requested, but is not enforced. So with that in mind, I once again redesigned absolutely everything, getting rid of the jumper shorts, the current selection, since it just wasn't completely unnecessary. I did resort back to a four-layer design, simply because I wanted better thermal performance, as well as just broken out the USB data line. In a nutshell, the design is simple. The USB provides the power and it exits uh, directly. The only thing stopping it is the MOSFET gates, which is controlled by the CYPD. So this design just kind of has the best of both worlds. It is breadboard compatible, but you can also attach the wires either by soldering or the screw terminal. The only thing different was that for coarse current, I fixed it at two amps and for fine at zero. Voltage selection is the same. It just now happens through dip switches instead of jumper cap. It felt good, so I ordered it. Now, as I said, they can be assembled in three different ways, either with screw terminal, solder joints, or breadboard compatible. I think this one is good because there's no soldering required for wires or selection. This one can be used for a more permanent fix and breadboard compatibility. I think it's very convenient, as I will show later. Now, I gotta say, the voltages that you are available to will purely depend on the USB PD supply that you're using. If yours cannot do 12 volts, then this PD adapter won't help you. The short circuit protection works perfectly fine for all voltages. It cuts off and when the fault is removed, it returns back to normal. I did some load testing with a 7 ohm resistor. I've set it to 20 volts and I attached the multimeter to measure the current and I was able to dump around 2.8 volts, which is 60 watts ish. It doesn't look like anything, but it's very hot. And I was certainly satisfied with the overall power quality performance. Now I think the comments are right. And I think it's really cool that I can just power 12 volt LED lights without my power supply. And just in general have one of the core voltages just at the tip of my fingers. Unfortunately, I don't have a heat camera, but my fingers say it's not hot at all. If you're after something a bit more permanent, you can just solder the wires directly, heat shrink the device, and now you have 20 volts from a board that is about the same thickness as the LED lights itself. So another cool thing is that if you request a voltage that your PD supply cannot provide, it will just simply default to 5 volts and you're gonna get an LED light saying that that voltage was not been able to be processed. If you'd like to know more details or support the project, you can order it online and I'm gonna ship it in about three weeks.